This is a pretty old guitar case, which typically means that we can expect to find an old guitar inside. And a look, there is. This is my buddy Keelan's 1967 D28. I love the looks of this guitar. The Sitka spruce top has aged really nicely. Um, I'm looking right now at the headstock of the guitar though in this video, so you can see uh, here you see the Martin logo and we're scanning down the neck. This has got an uh, ebony fretboard on it and we're slowly getting to the top. Yeah, so the top here um, It's bronzed yellow just like you would expect to see on a vintage guitar The back and the sides are a beautiful Brazilian rosewood most players myself included uh, Love the looks of Brazilian rosewood for its tendency to be figured and to have deep dark grains uh, and uh, dark colorations on it not to mention the quality of its sound, which speaking of, I want to hear that real quick just because. Alright, so more of what this guitar sounds like momentarily, but just in case you were looking for the correct opinion early, that guitar sounds really freaking good. So vintage guitars like this are expensive, but then again so are boutique guitars like my Collings D2H that I so often play. Uh, and we're talking about thousands of dollars here, like uh, if you're buying the Collings brand new, we're talking about thousands of dollars. If you're buying the vintage uh, D28, we're talking about thousands of dollars. So anytime that someone is about to drop some huge chunk of money like that, I think it's natural to want to research a little bit and make sure that we're spending our money as wisely as we can. For me, this raises the question, if you can only buy one of the two, should you be buying a vintage guitar or should you be buying a boutique guitar? There are a lot of different options out there available to us as potential buyers. Um, and as such, there are a lot of things to be considered in deciding whether or not you want to buy a vintage or a boutique. So what I want for us to quickly explore are three things in relation to the vintage versus boutique debate that hopefully can shed some light on how to best spend money. Uh, those areas are value, quality, and sound comparison. Alright, so first value, or maybe we should think about it instead as price, but value, price. Uh, we can look to Reverb to get an idea here. The estimated price on the 1967 D28 can range anywhere from 3800 to 5800 It's worth noting that as a general rule of thumb, the older that a guitar is, the higher the price generally is on it. So if we were looking at a 1957 D28 instead of 67, we'd be seeing higher price points like in the $7,000 to $9,000 range. Also, there would be price shifts if we went to a different model like a Martin D18 made out of mahogany tends to be less expensive because mahogany is a less expensive tone wood than the D28 which is made out of Brazilian rosewood. The boutique guitar market can exhibit similar price points, and it's worth noting here that Collings, Bourgeois, and Hudson Dalton are all fairly similar on these price points. As an example, consider my Collings D2H. This is not a vintage guitar. It was made in 2014, and it has Indian rosewood back and sides rather than Brazilian rosewood. Uh, but other than that, the specs are extremely similar to that of 67 D28. We can see on Reverb that the price can hit anywhere between $3,000 and $6,000 on a Collings D2H. Elderly has the MSRP on this specific Collings at $51.25. So all of this to say, the price points are fairly comparable. You can buy a 60s Martin D28 between three and $6,000 and you can buy a new boutique at roughly the same price. What we can't see here is what these guitars are going to be worth in the future. Honestly, the guitar market is pretty saturated with boutique guitars, but will buyers of the future still think the same of Collings, Husson, Dalton, and Bourgeois the way that we do today? Or will the next generation of boutique builders, whoever they may be, win the affection and the demand of the market, displacing and weakening the value of guitars available in today's boutique market? I don't know the answer to that, and I don't think that anyone does, but um, if you remember the 1990s with Beanie Babies and when everyone thought that those were investments that would hold value and be worth tons of money someday, um, and then the market just said nope, and everybody had these Beanie Babies that weren't worth anything, 
Um, I'm not saying that the boutique market is the same as Beanie Babies in any way, but you know what? Guitar would never even bring that analogy anywhere close to my mind. A vintage Martin D28. I am very confident in predicting that this 1967 Martin D28 will absolutely continue to increase in value relative to the rest of the guitar market. So, vintage wins the value point for me on that last point alone. Alright, so construction. There are some really great vintage guitars that are out there. In fact, I'll go on the record to say that were we omnipotent and capable of discovering the best sounding and playing guitar that exists on the earth at this precise moment, it's likely going to be some old vintage guitar sitting somewhere. But, and this is a really big but for me, there are some absolute duds out there in vintage guitar land. The reason for this, I think, is because uh, the star power and the popularity associated with musical acts of the 1960s led to a huge ramp up in production from manufacturers like Martin and really kind of Gibson I think is a big offender here too. Uh, as these guitar companies are looking to meet the demand that had been created um, by a, you know, a sprawling music industry as everyone and their brother thought that they were going to be the next big thing. Everybody wanted a guitar. Every John and Jane Doe um, thinking they were going to be the next Beatles or just casual living room musicians, they all needed guitars. So unfortunately, quantity over quality ruled the market for a while. Hence, there are some real duds out there. By comparison, the boutique market is one in which most guitars are made purely by hand and usually just by a handful of insanely experienced individuals in-house. Many times these guitars are made to order, the polar opposite of anything resembling mass production. So again, I suspect that if we were omnipotent and capable of playing every vintage guitar and every boutique guitar on planet Earth right now and compiled our findings into a pie chart, the number of boutique guitars that fell into the dud category would be far fewer than the number of vintage guitars that fell into the dud category. So for that reason, boutique wins the construction point for me. All right, lastly, sound comparison. I'm gonna compare these two guitars, the uh, 67 Martin D28 and my boutique Collings D2H. In each round, you will hear the Martin, the vintage guitar first, and then Collings, the boutique guitar.
So, having heard those two back to back, we know that we've got one point that was assigned to vintage based off of value. We've got one point that was assigned to boutique based off of construction. As far as sound, that one's going to be the tiebreaker. Let me know in the comments below which one you think won out and that if you were forced to buy between boutique and vintage, which you think the better value, the better sound, and overall guitar would be for you.